Hi friends, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Today I'm going to be making this cute little Easter traveler's notebook out of the Easter freebie that you can get on this card that you see here, or you can get it in the link down below. It has um, several pages in it. It has four sort of full pages, full journaling pages, and then two pages of ephemera, Easter ephemera, vintage Easter ephemera. And I'm going to be making this little cute traveler's notebook from that. So let's just take a little bit of a flip through so that you can see what we're doing. I just uh, made a closure here with some sari ribbon. And this book is actually made from one piece of paper that we have folded to make our inside covers. So when you open it up, there's a pocket here. And then we have two little flips here. One is a little envelope. One is an accordion page that has some uh, ephemera and places to journal in. And these fold independently, which I love. And then there is also included a little inside notebook with some blank pages for you to journal on. And then there is a big uh, pocket on the back of that little inside journal. And then there's a tuck spot here with some more ephemera in it. So it's the perfect size for you to take it with you maybe if you're traveling this Easter or to just journal through Holy Week and into Easter if you wanted to, or maybe even after Easter to just jot down some of your memories and maybe throw in some pictures to remind you of your holiday this year. So I hope that you'll join me as we make this little Easter traveler's notebook from my Easter freebie, and you can get that in the link down below. Let's get to it. All right, let's talk about some supplies and tools that we're going to use. So the main kit I'm going to be using is my Easter freebie, and you can get this. I will link it down below or in the corner here. I'll put a little card up there where you can go right and get um, the Easter freebie. So I've printed it out. Let me just uh, tell you kind of what I did to print it out. So I printed the ephemera pages um, a little bit smaller than normal. So instead of a full page print for each of these um, JPEG pages, I actually did them eight by 10. Because my traveler's notebook is gonna be smaller than a full size journal, I wanted these to be a little bit smaller so that I could make some pockets and tucks and things without them maybe going over the, the sides of everything. So that's what I did for these two pages, but I may also be using some um, to make ephemera, note cards, things to go into the notebook as well. So that being said, I'm probably going to use some old book pages to maybe back some of my ephemera with that. And then also for the kit, the Easter freebie kit, it comes with um, four different background pages, two that are um, pretty um they have a lot of collage bits and things on them. So they're pretty graphic, I guess I should say. And then there are two others that are sort of background-ish. So one kind of looks like that. And I think the other one is on here. So it kind of, they're, you know, different background pages. So what I did was I print those two busier graphic pages on one side because I'm going to use and I used cardstock for these because I want to print this. I want to use this as my cover for my traveler's notebook. And this is going to be an inside cover that's going to be used for like the notebook that's kind of inside. So I wanted cardstock for both of these. And then the inside cover, I just wanted something plain here. So I used one of the plain backgrounds. I used one of the lined backgrounds. And then my third page, I actually printed also on cardstock because this is where we're going to make our accordion folds and our um, envelopes and different things like that. Um, I just printed the same thing on both sides. So since there's going to be a lot of folding, you know, you're not going to really notice that, you know, the one side is the same as the other side. And it may even be preferable to kind of have this a little bit plain so that when we put our tuck spots and different things on here, you know, it won't take away from that as well. So those are the three pages that I'm going to get started with. And then um, we'll see what else we probably will need in here as we go. So those 
those are the um, digitals all printed out that I'm going to use, put those aside. And then I'm probably gonna use a couple of blank pages. Now, normally I would use probably like coffee dyed page pages here, but because this kit is kind of um, light and sort of, you know, creamy, I thought this would be a nice page to add. So you could certainly do some more vintage style papers here, your co coffee dyed or tea dyed papers if you wanted to. You could even use some of the background pages to make your inside notebook pages as well. So that's, this is just entirely up to you how, what you want to do. So that's those things. And then I'll be using my cutter definitely to cut all kinds of things out there. I'm gonna be using my scoreboard a lot. And I have these little um, scoring tools that I like to use on this board. Um, the one that comes with it, the score tool that comes with it, I don't really like. Sometimes it rips my paper, I don't like that. So I use this one um, and I use a pretty big nub on the end so that I'm not you know, tearing through the paper. I guess I'm, I'm kind of um, rough <laughs> when I score score things. So I need to be careful that I'm not going through the paper. So we'll be using the scoreboard there. I'm going to try to use some of this antique linen distress ink uh, for the different things around my ephemera and things like that once I get it cut off to knock down the white edges. And then I'll probably be using some glue. These are my three favorites. Um, I will probably, I probably won't be using this one as much today, not my glue stick. So I'll probably either be using my art glitter glue or my three-in-one um, craft glue to glue things down because I want everything to hold very well. And then I'll also be using my, probably a corner rounder to round um, some of the edges of the envelopes and things like that and some circle punches. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna use my one inch punch or my two inch punch, but um, I have the option of both of those uh, as we go, I'll decide, you know, which one I think looks better. So those are those tools. And then the other thing that I don't have out here that I know I'm going to be using is my sewing machine. I'm definitely going to do a lot of sewing in here. I love the extra texture that sewing adds to a journal. So I'm definitely going to be using that sewing machine around a lot of those things. That's also completely optional. You don't have to do that um, either. You could just add glued on fabric, glued on rickrack, um, or, or nothing. You don't even have to, to add anything to it if you don't want to. So those are our tools and supplies. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first order of business, we are going to make our inside notebook. So this is where I'm going to keep um, my place for journaling. So just blank pages, places for me to, you know, add my thoughts and that kind of thing. It's going to be very small. I made a big journal for Easter last year and I didn't fill it up. So I thought I would try to make something a little smaller this year, maybe a little bit more um, uh, something that I would feel like I was actually finishing, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking the piece of cardstock that I printed out as one of my cover pieces. Now this is the one I've chosen to do my inside cover piece and I have it printed on the back with the lined background page. And then I'm also going to use some of my blank pages. Um, I pulled out a bunch, but I'm not going to use this many at all. But what we need to do, because this is going to fit inside of our main traveler's notebook, we need to make this smaller so that it'll fit inside it properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece down to be eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. That way our the height of our inside notebook will be eight and a half inches, but then our width will be four and a quarter inches and that'll fit nicely inside the outside cover, if that all makes sense. So the other thing that I wanted to mention, when I cut this down, I'm cutting off about two and a half inches. I just need to decide, you know, what side I wanna take that off of. So, you know, if I'm looking at this piece of paper, smaller ruler here. So um, if I'm looking at this, if I think, well, maybe I'll cut off the left edge, two and a half inches is going to kind of cut my little chickadee off here and you won't be able to see him pulling on that ribbon there. So I'm thinking that I would rather cut off a little bit of the flowers and that won't, that'll leave more of the graphics on this side as the cover of my notebook. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut off two and a half inches off of this side, but hang on to that because we're going to be using that as a tuck spot on the other side um, or as another piece in our journal there. So I'm going to put this in and I'm just going to go to about eight and a half inches here and it actually will cut off just at the edge of this little um, Easter card here, which is gonna be perfect. So I'm just gonna cut that two and a half inches off. We're gonna save this piece and we're gonna use that. But then this is gonna be our inside cover. And actually before I put um, my cutter away, I'm gonna cut down my pieces of paper because obviously I want these to go inside here and I need to cut them down too, otherwise they're gonna be too big. Now you could just decide to fold some of them with an additional flap on them if you wanted to, but I think I'm gonna do this um, kind of simple and I'm just gonna cut them down to the same size. Um, actually, I may cut them down just like maybe a quarter of an inch smaller so that they don't stick out the edge. So I'm going to take my However many pieces you choose, I'm gonna, once again, keep it kind of small. Two, three, four, I think I'm gonna do five pieces and I think that's gonna be plenty. And that may even be, you know, more than I want. So, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna go do four. <laughs> See what, how that does. So instead of going um, to eight and a half this time, I'm just gonna take it down to eight and a quarter so that I'll have a little bit of give in between the edges of the paper and you'll see what I mean. So for these, I'm going to just fold these in half. And so now I have double the amount. So I'll have eight inside pages, which is gonna be just, I think, plenty for me to do journaling and things like that that I want. Maybe some collage, some Easter collage and that kind of thing. And then same with this, I'm going to fold this in half, but I'm gonna use my scoreboard here because um, sometimes cardstock doesn't fold as nicely unless it has, you know, a score already in it. And I wanna be sure that I only have to do this once. <laughs> so that being said, let me make sure I'm scoring it at the right um, mark here. So our, we cut it down to eight and a half inches. So I wanna do half of that, which would be four and a quarter. So I'm just gonna make a nice score line here at four and a quarter. And then this should fold very nicely into our inside cover. So now I can put this away for a second. And you can see when I put those in, the edges of the pages aren't going to stick out at all. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but my printer decided to miss just like, I don't know, a very teeny tiny bit um, on this edge of the page. So I'm definitely gonna use my Distress Ink to just try and cover that up a little bit since my printer didn't wanna print so nicely for me. And then the other thing that I wanna do, I think I am gonna round the edges of these. So I think I'm gonna do a relatively open corner here. So I like that. So this, um, I don't know, this corner rounder I got, it's a Becky Higgins corner rounder for like, I think for Project Life. So, and I like that it has three different angles of corners so you can choose which one you like the best. So we're gonna start with that. And then I'm also gonna do these as well. And I'm gonna see if I can get them all in one punch. Well, each corner, let's see if I can. Oh yeah, that worked nice. So if you have a little bit thicker paper, you may want to do this one at a time so that you're not um, either putting too much stress on your corner rounder um, or possibly, you know, chewing your paper a little bit when you don't want to do that. So there we go. All right, so that is almost done. I love that this is gonna be quick and easy. Now to um, secure this into an actual notebook, you could do a you know three hole binder punch, or I'm sorry, three hole binder um, stitch, 
or like I'm going to do, I am just going to run my sewing machine right down the middle and just do a nice straight stitch to hold everything together. Um, I wanted this to be fast and easy so that it's ready to go, but I also want it to be, you know, something that I want to use. So before I do that though, I am going to grab a piece of deli paper here and I'm gonna do some distress around this um, entire cover page here to make sure that that like that white that I had mentioned is um, nice and creamy. All right, I got my distress all done there. And then before I take it over to my sewing machine, I'm just gonna put these big giant paper clips on to hold everything in place for me. Um, if you don't have these, you could just use regular paper clips or you could use um, binder clips. Um, I think I have some over here. So I have some small ones like this you could use, you know, to hold things on. When I'm uh, holding things down for sewing, I like to use the paper clips just because they help things lay a little bit flatter. Um, but you could also just not put anything on there and just sew it, you know, just holding it in place like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this and then I'll be right back. All right, step one, all done here. And now I'm just going to, I think I may just, um, I mean, it's it's folding pretty good now. I was gonna say I may just put this under a book for a little bit to really, you know, give it a press down while we're do some, doing some of the other steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll get started on the front cover and some of the inside flips that we got going. All right, we're gonna do some work on our outside cover, <laughs> so our main cover. So um, I've chosen this print on cardstock with a background print on the back, and I'm going to use my scoreboard again. Now this is um, a US size paper, so it's eight and a half by 11. And to make our little pages for the inside, we're gonna do a series of scores. So um, whatever size paper you have, you would just need to, you know, maybe remeasure some of the things um, that you want to do on the inside. But the premise to make these little pages on the inside is the same. So what that is, is we're going to do five different scores, a half an inch apart, and we're going to start in the middle. So our middle for this size paper, 11 inches, is going to be five and a half. And then I'm going to do two scores to the left. So we're going to do a five inch score and a four and a half inch score. And then we're gonna do two scores to the right of the middle score, which would be six inches and then six and a half inches. So we're gonna do those five scores to um, make all of our little inside flaps. Okay, I already started folding these after I put my five scores in, but I was folding them the wrong way. So I wanna make sure I tell you the right <laughs> thing to do. So whatever side of your cover you want to be your front, you're gonna start there and we're going to do our first fold over that way. So the score that is closest to the right is gonna be your first fold over. So this is gonna be our front. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda of do an accordion fold back and forth from there. So after that one, I'm gonna to go to the second half inch score and go the other way. And then back again, the other way. So now you'll see I'm kind of, I kind of have this little accordion thing going on. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So since we folded this one this way, we're gonna fold this half inch back. And then our back flap at the last fold there will become the back of our traveler's notebook. So you can see when I open it up, I have sort of this little zigzag here going on, okay? And this is gonna be our front and this is gonna be our back, okay? So now to finish this off, because we want to make sure these pages 
uh, which are these little bumps on the inside, our little accordion folds on the inside, are glued together. So we're going to, on the outside cover, I'm gonna use, um, actually, I think I might use my glitter glue. I like this for paper a lot. So I'm going to glue the folds together. So you can see, I have this back little fold here. So I'm gonna glue this one together like that. And then we're gonna glue this one together like that so that it ends up being one piece in the back there, okay? So I'm just going to add my glue after I take off the little nub there, keeping within the accordion lines. And um, you could do these one at a time if you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them both and then we'll hold the whole thing together until it grabs, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna hang on to this for just a second. Put my glue top back on, and then we will see where we're at. All right, now my pages, my page uh, little creases here are nice and um, glued together and dry, which is what I wanted before I moved on too much. But now let's go ahead and start on working working on the inside. So now we have one more um, full cardstock piece of paper left, and I'm going to cut that to do our next inside pieces. So let me just grab my cutter here. And then what you're gonna do is with your full size piece, you're just going to cut it in half the um, lengthwise, I guess I should say. So this is, eight and a half inches wide. I'm gonna cut this down to four and a quarter inches to make sure that it is actually even. And before I do that, let me just, you know, I never trust myself. Yes, this is eight and a half inches. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut it down to four and a quarter so that I have two halves that are the same size, okay? And then one more time, I'm going to get my scoreboard out because I'm going to make a couple of things with these. So let me move my cover over to the side here. And so one of these, I'm going to um, score, let me find my score. Okay, so we're gonna have a little accordion fold at the top and to fold that, I'm sorry, to score that, I'm gonna score that at, let me just check my notes here. Did I have that at? We're gonna do a four inch and an eight inch score for that. So easy peasy, four inch there and eight. Oop. I'm trying not to go off the track like I did. Okay, so this is gonna be our little accordion piece. So when you fold it, you're gonna fold one piece one way and the other piece the other way to give us our little accordion fold there. Okay, so that's one uh, part. And then our other sheet, we're going to fold it into a little bit of an envelope. So let's see how I want to do this here. Um, okay, so the the score marks for the envelope, I'm going to do at three and three quarter inches and eight inches. So three and three quarters. And the reason I'm doing that is so I have a little bit of room to tuck things into. That's why I'm doing this at three and three quarter and then also at eight inches here. Okay. So then this one, we're going to fold into an envelope. I'm going to actually fold it this way. And so you can see when you fold it, they both come in towards each other, but now I have room here to put, I'm going to put a little, I'm going to use one of my circle punches. We're going to punch a little hole in the middle as a little tab there. And I'm just gonna eyeball the center. Hopefully um, it's close. I am notoriously bad at this and that was pretty bad, but <laughs> that's why I mark it because for some reason I can't ever seem to get them straight, but that's okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to do for the top of this envelope, I am going to round the edges. So let me find my edges again. 
And this one, I'm going to make um, a little bit bigger rounding like that. Okay, and then for my accordion fold, I am going to round the edges of this too, just so my, both of my sheets are kind of matching each other. Okay. All right, so now clean up my schniblets here. Now we're ready to get these um, set up on the inside. So go ahead and grab your cover again, and we'll get started on that. Okay, before we do our um, inside pieces on our pages in here, I don't wanna get ahead of myself because I do wanna add some things to either side of my inside cover and then also um, some stitching as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round the corners of my um, outer cover because I do really like the way it looks to have everything rounded. And I think I'm gonna use, let me see what size. Yeah, you know what, I think I'm gonna use the bigger round and I may need to go back and um, re-round the corners of my inside notebook, but I can do that if I want to. It may not even show, but okay, so that's nice and rounded. And then what I think I'm gonna do is decide how I'm going to add things to the inside here um, just so I won't have to be fiddling with it later once we have the pages in and I you know, might have to be flopping things back and forth. So I'm just going to put that aside and I am going to, whoa, I'm going to drop my cutter is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut out all my ephemera. Now my ephemera, I printed on presentation paper, so it's heavier than regular copy paper, but it is thinner than cardstock. So because I didn't know what I'd be doing with all of these different pieces, I just wanted it on a little bit lighter. Um, if we want to stabilize anything, you know, as we're putting it down, we'll add things to the back of that. So I'm just gonna go through right now and cut out all of these pieces of ephemera so that we can make decisions on the go. Okay, I have all my ephemera cut out, and because I want to try to minimize how many additional things I have to use, I really wanted to try and stick to just using, you know, this little freebie kit that I have. I am going to um, make a little bit of changes to the different things that I have. So what I wanted to do, I really love this postcard, and I really would like that to be um, on the front cover, inside cover as a pocket. So I'm definitely going to use that there. And then I have this nice big piece of ephemera that I was thinking might be fun as a flip here, but because I want to um, back this envelope that we folded with another pocket, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into two pieces. So I'm going to leave this um, as wide as it is, but I'm going to cut it in, not quite in half, but I'm gonna cut it here at this last line. So all the words um, on this little order sheet will be up at the top, and then most of the flower will be down at the bottom. So let me kind of show you what I'm thinking here. So I'm gonna grab my cutter, and the other thing that I you know, wanted to point out is that I am gonna to have to cut this down because it's still too big to fit you know, uh, correctly on here. So first I'm gonna do this. I'm going to cut this, um, piece down here to cut off right at that line. So I'll have a teeny bit of the flower on here and then most of the flower on here. So I was thinking that this would make a nice back pocket, a nice big back pocket um, for some ephemera and things like that. And then I could use this piece as my little small pocket to back um, this piece here. So that's what I'm planning to do here. So I'm gonna put that aside for now. Oh, and I have to cut this piece down. So I know that my front and back cover up to the um, first fold there is four and a half 
inches. So I know that I have to have it at four and a half or just a little bit less. And this one is already um, at only, well, maybe four and a quarter. So that one's perfect for that side. And then this one we're going to cut down. Now um, I want to see, I don't want to cut off too much of my little graphic over here. So I'm just going to see if I can, when I, if I would cut it at four and a half there, it would, well, actually it's not going to really cut into my letters. I wanted to be sure that it wasn't going to cut off my letters because I love them. That's part of what I love about this postcard. So I think that's going to work perfectly. So now I have this that will fit right inside of here and we will round that one corner to make it work as well as this one. So we just want to round the one corner so that it, it fits on that front page just perfectly. Whoops, I don't know why, but for some reason this one doesn't, if I don't have it in there just right, I don't know, it doesn't cut everything for some reason. Okay, so this one will go like this as my little pocket there. And then same with this one, I am going to, now this one doesn't quite fit into the whole thing, but I'm still going to just round this corner so that when we put it on, it will sit right there and I could um we could actually make this into a tuck spot actually that might be kind of fun we'll do something a little bit different with that so that it's not just a just a plain old pocket over there so what I'm going to do because I printed these on a little bit lighter paper I'm going to grab the um book pages that I had pulled out from before and we're going to glue these down onto some book pages to give us a little bit of um, weight to these so before I glue them down on the book pages, I am going to actually glue two of the book pages together. Since these are pretty light, we're going to put two together to do our backing. So once I have those two together, then I'm just going to let me grab my little glue pad here. Then I'm just going to glue this all the way down. And once this glue is dry, I am going to do some sewing on these. But like I said, they're just too um, lightweight for me to, to really work with them right now. I don't want them to be, you know, ripping when I'm putting things in the pocket or things like that. So I'm going to glue these down and I like to try to line up as many edges as I possibly can so that I, that I have to do less cutting. <laughs> so um, for this one. I'll probably glue it down this way, maybe even see if I can do it up at the top there, or if I flip it around at the bottom, so that I'll have all the straight edges lined up as best I can. I think I went a little bit over. On that one, I'm going to try this again. That's the only thing. It's okay to be under so that your book pages are sticking out, but you really don't want your digital sticking out unless you want to cut it down a little bit more. So, okay, so these are on here. I have them glued to two pieces of paper. You'll have to add a little glue in here. And then we'll let those dry a minute and I'm just going to tear those out just like that for now. And then I think what I'm going to do is once this is dry, I'm going to cut these out. And when I put them on, I may just sort of um, tack them on with glue and then sew around the outside edges of the cover. So I'll sew like from here around to here and that will sew this pocket on. And then I'll do the same thing. So around from here to here, which will put um, this pocket on. So I will have to, for the smaller one, well, actually probably for both, I will have to, on the one edge on the inside, add some glue there, you know, to make sure it stays down. But that shouldn't be an issue. So, all right, that glue stick dries pretty fast. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Now I am going to add a little bit of distressing to these 
Oh, and we wanted to do a little bit of a tuck spot here. So that is gonna change things a little bit for us. So I'm just gonna do sort of a, an angled tuck spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a point and maybe I'll use my pencil. So I'm just gonna cut a little diagonal out of this to make it easier to you know, tuck things into it. So I think, because I don't wanna cut off too much of my flower, I'm going to try to put one edge here and then maybe the other one here. And this is just kind of an eyeball thing. So then I'm just gonna line up my two pencil marks on my cutter here. And before I cut, I'll just make sure that, you know, most of my flower is showing, which it is. So, and then I think I can pull that off like that. And I like the way that looks. And then we can maybe add some um, collage or something to that as well. So let me go ahead and distress these. And then I am going to probably sew the open edges. And actually, I think I'm going to make a little notch in this one as well. But since I didn't have so much luck on the last one, I am going <laughs> to mark this one and do my punch with a guide so I don't get it too far out of the middle. So, there we go. All right, let's get some distress on these. Okay, before I sew them or, or, you know, tack glue them down onto the cover, I am gonna sew my open edges. So I like to sew the openings before I glue anything down so that once they're all together, it's going to look, um, you know, like it's been sewn all the way around. But obviously I don't wanna sew anything closed. So for this one, because I'm not going to sew this edge here, um, since I already have this all folded together, I'm going to, I'm going to sew up this side and then across my top, but then I'm, I'm not going to do the, the rest of the outer edge because that will be taken care of when I sew around, um, on the cover. And then for this side, I'm going to not sew around the bottom edge or the side edge. We'll leave those for when I sew around the cover, but I am going to sew up this small edge, my, um, diagonal here, and then across the top, just so that will all be, um, sewn and look, you know, cohesive throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those and we'll, I'll show you when I get back what we ended up with. Okay, I finished sewing. Um, you can see here I sewed across the top and down the inside here. And then for the back piece, I sewed across the top down the diagonal and the inside piece, leaving the other two edges open. So that's what we're gonna leave this at for just a minute. And the next step before I sew these down, I just wanna show you what I'm gonna do with these inside pages um, so that we can get that going as well. So let me grab a ruler. And what we're gonna do is we're going to trim or cut this first fold, okay? So I'm gonna grab my pencil and we're gonna cut it in half. Since we cut these in half, we know that they are uh, four and a quarter inches each. So I'm just going to try and do this without getting my head all in the way. But I'm going to mark this at four and a quarter inches. And then before I cut, I'm just going to measure them and make sure that I got that right. <laughs> so when we put our two uh, fold outs in here, we don't want them to overlap or whatever. So, all right, so now all I'm gonna do is just taking this one piece, so leave, make sure you fold your other flap behind. I'm just gonna cut one cut right to the outside fold. And then I'm actually gonna do a little bit of trimming so we're going to just angle, we're gonna make a little triangle on either side of this. So we have a nice break in there. 
And then I'm also holding that back. I'm going to trim each of the edges in the same way. So we're going to make a little half V, little half triangle angle in here like that. Okay. And then with our other flap, so once again, fold this one back. And so we're only, you know, working with one. I'm going to make these angled as well. Okay. So now we have all of our angles done. And now I feel a little bit better sewing around and putting these on so that, you know, this is all ready to go and out of our way. So that's our next step. I'm going to, um, I'm going to glue these down just a little, just to hold them on right where I want them. And this is another place where you could use your, um, binder clips if you wanted to. Actually, I may even do that so that I'm not even worrying about any glue. I'm going to use some nice big binder clip here so that when I sew around it, because I just have to get it to a point where I may not even want to do that. I'm going to get a smaller binder clip so that I don't end up adding a, a indentation in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this on like this. And so that'll hold it in place. And then once I get to the point where I am down here, then it, you know, I won't need the binder clip anymore. And the reason I'm saying that is because I want to sew on this side. So I am kind of, you know, sewing this on blind. So I really need it to be in the spot where I want it to be before I sew it down and, um, you know, I don't want it to move around and get out of the way. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to, once I do this side, then I will put, I'll move the binder clip over to here and we'll do the same thing. And actually, before I do that though, I am going to need to glue down the edges that won't get sewn. So this edge and this edge, I am going to glue those down. So let me do that. And this will, because I'm not sewing over that, this will help hold it in place a little bit. So I'm just putting one little line of glue right there on that side. And then I'm going to make sure I line this up with the outer corner right where I want it to be. And then I may actually just hold this in place just for a minute to let that grab. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to put a bead of glue right here. Maybe I can put my, what can I put on there? Put my ruler on there. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I'm just going to put a bead of glue right here. Just so we have our pocket all the way <laughs> glued down. Like that. And I'm trying to make sure I don't um, get it too far in that I'm messing up the crease, but I do want it, you know, lined up flush with the edge. And let's see, I think I have another small one over here. Okay. And this glue grabs pretty fast, so I'm just going to hold them with my fingers for another couple seconds. But then I'm going to go sew around the outside and we'll see how that looks when I get back. 